Hey, what's going on? It's your homie Usman Unchained. And in today's video, we're talking all about obsessive and intrusive thoughts. I'm gonna give you five key ways in which you can help yourself through this and overcome it long term. That is possible, my man. I want you to understand that it's possible for you because it was possible for me. Now, before we get into it, make sure that you like the video, you subscribe if you get some value out of this video. I don't expect you to do that if you don't get anything valuable from this. So just have it in your mind and I might remind you halfway through. So a little bit about my story. I used to struggle with non-stop thoughts, something that I call a sticky mind, okay? An extremely sticky mind. My day would be going great, but all it would take was for one thought to come in the mind that was particularly sticky and it would be on my mind all day long and I would just ruminate, okay? This got so bad to one point with a particular situation I'll tell you about, which to be honest, I'm a little bit scared to share, but I will anyway. It got to a point of wanting to end life because I just couldn't find another way out from this overthinking obsessive mind. Now, Here's a little bit about my story. <laughs> I feel embarrassed, but hey, let's do this. Let me just mm, get out the comfort zone, yeah? Have you ever looked at a guy, right? If you're a guy and if you're a woman watching this, have you ever looked at someone of the same sex and thought, what if I was attracted to them, right? What if I turned gay? Okay, I said it. This is exactly what I struggled with. This is one of the obsessive compulsive thought patterns that I used to get into. And it lasted a whole year and it was like a living hell. Okay, I would think, what if I turn gay? I just finished a relationship with a girl. She was very beautiful, okay? And I remember at the time I said to my sister, I said to her, I'm just so confused. I don't know why this has happened. And she said, I hope you're not too confused. And from that moment, I had this thought into my mind, well, what if, oh, what if I turn gay? Oh no, what if this, that's what this is about? What if I turn gay? <laughs> now I can talk about this now because I've gone through it, but at the time I didn't feel like I could tell anyone about it, okay? This became a dark, twisted thing an entity of its own and it ruled my mind from morning until night every single day for like I said a whole year okay and I was able to reverse that okay I was able to reverse it and there might be some different opinions going on here let me just remind you that this channel is all about good it's all about inspiring good it's all about helping others helping you overcome your struggles whether they're addictions obsessive mind, poor mental health, poor physical health. That's what this is about. And so this isn't about me being right. And this isn't about me making you wrong. And so if you share a different opinion, that's completely okay. And feel free to leave that opinion in the comments if you want to. So for me, this was a thought. What, what if I turn gay? Yeah, just know you're not alone, okay? I experienced this. I've shared this with other guys since then and they've admitted that they experienced similar things too and they'd never told anyone about it. So I bet this is far more common than we think. And so this became an obsession, became a habit, it became a pattern and it ruled my days. And so I was able to break free from that. I no longer have those thoughts today. And so that's why I wanna create this video. I wanna share with you some things that really helped me and things that can use in your life to make the highest impact and find your way through this challenge. So the first thing you wanna consider is that obsession and obsessive thoughts are an attempt, a futile attempt, right? A futile attempt to solve a problem, okay? To solve a problem, you're looking for a solution, whether it's something that happened in the past, you're looking to know that it's okay, whether it's something in the future, you're looking to know that it's going to be okay, or preparing for an argument or whatever it might be, you're obsessing over it, okay? Or it might be something right now in this moment, like you look at yourself in the mirror, okay? And you see what something that you don't like. And so 
your mind tells you, oh, what about this? Maybe you should change that. Maybe you should change that. Maybe you should change that. It's trying to solve a problem, okay? And so be grateful for obsession. I know this is gonna sound crazy. It's gonna make more sense as I go through the video. Be grateful for the obsessive mind because what it's trying to do is it's trying to help you. It's trying but it's just not very good at the job that it's trying to get done. That job that it's trying to get done is to solve your problem, okay? Maybe you feel insecure, maybe you feel unworthy, maybe you don't like yourself, and so your mind is trying to create solutions, but here's the thing, your mind cannot find solutions through thinking, okay? So that is the first thing I want you to consider here. And You might think, well, isn't thinking how I find solutions. Believe it or not, solutions come from a different place, okay? Solutions don't come through rumination. Solutions come through consciousness, okay? So the first thing I want you to consider is that obsession, and you can write this down if it's gonna help you, obsession is a futile attempt to solve a problem. Write that down. Start to notice how it's trying to solve a problem. It's not very good at it, okay? It's not very good at it, because it just loops around and around and around. But the problem is that you think you think that thinking is the way that you're gonna find your solution. You think that if you continue to think about it, that you're gonna finally get to that point where you have a realization or you get to some solution and then you feel better. But the fact that you've gotta accept if you wanna overcome obsessive thoughts and intrusive thoughts is that thinking is not gonna lead you there. I believe it was Einstein that said that you cannot solve a problem from the same, pl from the same place that it was created from, something along those lines. And a great analogy I came across props to Elliot Hulse back in the day, was he said, you can't touch the tip of this finger with the tip of this finger. You just can't do it. You can't bite your teeth with your teeth. You can't look at your eye with your eye, okay? Of course, if you use a mirror, it's a different story, but you can't just look at your own eye with your eye. You can't solve a problem from the same place from which it was created, okay? So come to accept that because you're convinced, you're convinced that if you just think about it one more time, if you just think about it again, that you'll solve the problem, okay? With me in what if I turn gay? What if that's what's gonna happen all of a sudden? I believed that I had to check and so I'd look at guys and I'd say, am I attracted to him? No, okay, but what if? the mind said, and this is the obsessive language, what if, what if I'm attracted to that guy? Oh no, and what if I'm attracted to that guy? Oh no, it would be scared and it would be never, it would never be satisfied, okay? It was insatiable. So the problem cannot be solved from the place from which it originated. It starts in the mind, it can't be solved with the mind, okay? And so if you want to take something actionable from this, it's this, get into your body. Get into your body. Start spending more time in your body. Is this gonna help your situation completely straight away? Is this gonna solve obsessive overthinking and intrusive thoughts straight away? No but this is going to be something that you add to your lifestyle that's going to have an effect over time. The more time you spend in the body, the more time you're out of your head. The more time you're out of the head, the more you starve the habit, which leads to our second point. The second point that I wanna share with you today is that obsessive overthinking, compulsive thinking, the type that I had would be, the, it would be, classified and labeled as pure O type OCD, or even HOCD, homosexual OCD. There's labels for all of this stuff. But nonetheless, regardless of the label, whether you've got 
certain rituals that you have to do obsessively compulsively this is more like obsessive compulsive disorder the same applies these principles that i'm sharing with you today will apply and so the second thing i want to share with you is that this is a habit this is a habit okay this is a habit write it down now what's the thing that you can understand about habits if you learn about habits if you read books like atomic habits if you study behavior habits are formed through repetition and so the more you repeat this cycle this loop of thinking and acting if there's an action associated in that loop the stronger the loop will get and the more enslaved and dominated you'll feel by it okay and so in order to change the habit in order to break free from this you've got to starve that habit in the next point i'm going to share with you one of the ways that changed everything for me okay and as a meditation teacher i teach this to people but i'm going to share it with you today starve the habit and as you're starving the habit replace it at the same time you starve in one entity you feed in another okay like you've got two wolves you heard that analogy you starve the bad wolf you feed the good one okay so here's what we want to do we want to starve it i'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute and you want to replace it so here's what i want you to do every time that thought comes in and you have a choice to go down that thought loop once again and then get yourself into cycles of rumination for hours and hours how much time have you wasted ruminating i want you to replace it with a different thought now i personally used prayers i took prayers from islam and i recited these again and again and again now obviously you're going to find it easier to do that if you're already from the islamic faith but if you're not find some other prayers okay find some biblical ones find some mantras find something that you can repeat again and again and again okay use affirmation say i am safe i am strong i am here i am grateful yeah <laughs> i'm free and just repeat them and obsess over them right <laughs> get obsessed with the affirmations get obsessed with the mantras get obsessed with the prayers replace with new and starve the old and so the next thing i want to tell you about the next thing i want to share is how you can starve your obsessive overthinking pattern which is like an entity of its own you start to think of it like a little gremlin that's feeding on your attention that's feeding on your energy let's talk about how to starve the gremlin of obsession and intrusive thoughts so this made a huge difference in my life it still does today it still does today and that was the notion i want you to write this one down to keep a note of it okay don't just let this be something that adds to the information overload i want you to actually get better okay so it's going to take taking some notes and then acting on what you've learned and don't go watching tons of other videos on the topic as well this should be enough this should be enough so the next thing in starving the gremlin is to develop this notion right come to understand this notion that no thought is good or bad until you decide that it is write that down no thought is good or bad until you decide that it is and so you can have any thought come into your mind when i was a kid and whatever for whatever reason this would happen doesn't matter what matters is right now i would be in class in school and i'd have these thoughts enter in my mind of like violently attacking the teacher or like spitting in the teacher's face now at the time <laughs> yeah at the time god bless younger version of me he was scared he was scared he thought to himself something that you've probably thought a lot of the time right i shouldn't be thinking this am i a bad person for thinking this yeah you're not a bad person for having a thought it's actions that matter thoughts themselves are neutral okay and so what we've got to do to starve the gremlin is to stop 
what I call charging the thoughts That's the next key tip for you. Stop charging the thoughts, okay? You charge them by making them either positive or negative. Oh, I have a thought. Oh, that was a very nice thought. Well, if there's a very nice thought, then there's going to be a very unpleasant thought. Here's the nature of thought, though. The unpleasant ones come back. Have you noticed this? The ones that you don't like are harder not to think about, right? If you try not to think of something, you're going to think of it because the mind doesn't recognize don't want. The mind doesn't recognize not or the negative. It just brings it back. And so what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? For me, I was charging the thought of what if I turn gay? I was charging that with a lot of negative energy. Why? Because growing up in an Islamic household, that would be very bad. And there was a memory, a memory that came of my mother telling me, and God bless her, maybe she didn't mean it, I don't know. But she said that she would disown me if that was true. If that ever, if that ever happened, uh, like, and that was when I was a kid, just in the middle of a conversation, <laughs> okay. But it stuck with me, it stuck with me. These things do stick with us. And so, who would have known the impact of such a statement that would lead to one year, a whole year of intrusive and obsessive Ah, painful thinking. And it was only painful because I'd associated so much negativity with that thought, okay? Now this takes a bit of courage and faith because yes, of course, there are things in life that you want and things that you don't want, okay? There's things that you, were, you would prefer to be, ways in which you would prefer to be, whether that's because of the society, the community that you live in, which is not a bad thing, Right? or whether that's your personal preference. You have preferences, but your thoughts that come in, especially the intrusive ones, just know that the more you charge them as negative, and the more you don't want to have that thought, the more it's going to come in. And so develop something called equanimity. And that means the thought is just a ripple on a pond. That's all it is. And the fact that it's coming back so aggressively is because you're charging it with negative energy, which makes it come back. And so you sit there, you let your thought come, or you're going about your day because you're probably thinking about this all day, whatever your obsession is. Once it's triggered, it's active. And when it comes in, this is what you do. You just say, okay. Cool, <laughs> cool story. Next, instead of arguing with it, instead of saying, no, you're not true. No, that's not right, okay? Instead of getting into that battle, instead of getting into that fight, which you can't win through the same means from which it was created, just say, okay. <laughs> Honestly, this was a game changer for me. This was an absolute game changer. And what can help even more is to I'll, I'll go even deeper on what I'm about to say, but you disassociate from the mind. So you unidentify from it. You start seeing those obsessive and compulsive thoughts, those intrusive ones as a little gremlin. And this is how I saw it. It was like the gremlin tapping on my back like this. It was going to tap me on the back. And I had a choice to look at it and say, you're not true. And then the gremlin's going, ha, 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 yes, give me energy, give me energy. Ah, yes, like a little demon. Or I continue with my attention this way. It taps me on the back. I just say, sweet, man. <laughs> cool, bro. Okay. I don't need to argue with you. I don't need to check that you're true or false. I don't need to disprove you. Mm. Just okay. Again. This is going to take time in order to have an effect. Over time, the knot of the habit becomes looser and undone. Okay? So starve the thoughts, starve the obsession. This is exactly how you do it. Equanimity. Cool story, bro. When your mind comes up with something intrusive, something that you would usually be afraid of, and it takes courage, like I said, because you've got to be willing to experience that thought. 
without fear, okay? Courage is only possible in the face of fear, and so it's okay to be afraid. But when the thought arises, look at it, have the courage to face it, have the courage to look at it, and just say, okay. Have the courage to have the thought. Because a huge part of the problem is that you're afraid of having the thought. So every time it comes in, oh, it's going to just twist your world. It's going to turn it upside down. So let's dive even further. The next thing I want to share with you is something called unidentifying from the mind. That's just what I've mentioned then, similar to what I've mentioned then about seeing it like a gremlin. That's not you, but external to you, okay? And so have more experiences and be open to the experience that you are not your thoughts. Write this one down. You are not your thoughts. Okay? You are not them. You are not them. You are the witness of them. Now, I'm gonna just rewind and give you a bit of context here that might help you understand what I'm saying a little bit better. I was in the gym yesterday and we, I go into the sauna and there's a guy that I've met there recently and this guy was telling me that one time he had a hypnotic experience, yeah? He went to see a hypnotherapist and he was hypnotized. And as he was in the house, the home, the room, wherever it was with the hypnotherapist. The hypnotherapist said to him, after a few minutes of talking, I bet you didn't realize that there was a clock ticking whilst we'd been having this conversation. And the guy that I met in the gym, Dean, shout out if you're watching the video, man. He said to me, upon, upon the hypnotherapist saying this to him, there's a clock ticking. He became aware that there was a clock ticking. And then the hypnotherapist said to him, try and forget that, that tick now. Try and unhear it. And he just couldn't. <laughs> In fact, it became the only thing that he could hear. Okay? So what's the moral of this? The moral of this story is that things don't exist to you until you become aware of them. The clock didn't exist to him in that room. It didn't exist to him because he wasn't aware that it was actually happening. He wasn't aware of the sound of the ticking clock. As soon as he was aware of the sound of the ticking clock, then the clock exists to him, okay? So this might sound a little bit deep, but hey, life is deep. Now, how can we apply this to this situation? You, until you witness, until you become aware of the, the aspect of you that is not your thoughts, the aspect of you that is the witness of your thoughts, until you become aware of that, until you experience it like the clock ticking, it doesn't exist. And so until you have that experience, you believe that you're your mind. You believe that you are your thoughts. You believe that you are the gremlin, that you are the intrusive thoughts, that, that it's you. And so that's why you think, I shouldn't be thinking like this. Am I a bad person for thinking like this? No. This is what we call the ego. The ego is always thinking. The ego is always thinking. And I wanna try and give you a little bit of a description of the different layers of the mind to help you understand this a little bit deeper. So let me just try and do this rough. Let's say this is your mind space, dominated, dominated, okay, by the intrusive and obsessive thought. In the very center, in the very center is you, okay? The very center of that mind, the very center of your existence is you, okay? Now, until you experience that once again, you don't know that it exists, you, you're not aware of it, okay? Now, there are different, say, pieces of the mind, different categories of the mind, Let's split it up into three. The first is the ego. Okay? Now the ego occupies some of your mind space. The ego is like that constant voice that's speaking to itself in there. 
mm, should I go and do this, should I not, should I make that, oh, how about I go and do that, well, maybe not, maybe I should speak to her, oh, but what if she, you get the point? Yeah, it's a monologue, it's constantly taking place in there. This is the ego, it's the thinking mind, it likes to put labels on things, it likes to say, this is good, this is bad, okay? The ego is a natural part of human existence. There is no human life without an ego. And so be wary of the trap in the new age of ego death because that doesn't exist long term. That's a short term experience of being egoless, which can be very liberating, but it's a short term experience that doesn't last forever, okay? So you've got your ego constantly thinking getting distracted if you ever tried meditating your ego is the thing that's getting distracted it's thinking about the past or the future it's just going off into all kinds of different thoughts the next part of this mind space this psyche is the shadow now the shadow is a deep part of the unconscious the shadow contains all of the things in which you've classified to be very very bad okay don't think that thought, that's wrong, okay? Or an experience that you've had, in my case, it was my mother saying, I would disown you if you were homosexual, okay? So homosexuality gets put in the shadow. Then if any thought about homosexuality comes up from that shadow, the ego's gonna go crazy on it. The ego's gonna go crazy on it. I hope this is making sense. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're getting some value. Okay, anything can be in the shadow, anything that you've experienced early on in life, okay? This is oftentimes related to certain traits, human traits, so maybe even anger gets put into your shadow whenever you have an angry thought, you obsess over it because you think it's wrong, okay? And because there's something from the shadow leaking out into your psyche there, right? Could be jealousy, maybe you've said that it's wrong to be jealous, Okay, it's wrong to experience that. Hey, it's not productive, but we all experience it. So you're not innately wrong or a bad person for experiencing jealousy or envy. It's just an experience, it's just thought, okay? So you've got your shadow there, your ego, and then you've got a space that you can occupy from the center here, which we'll call pure thought. I didn't know I was going to go so deep on this video, but hey, I, I, I seem to be, okay? Pure thought space. This is where you choose to thought consciously. So if I choose right now to think of apples, I see an apple. I can visualize using the pure thought space, right? Conscious visualization. I can choose to say the word, hello there, within my own mind. Can you try that right now? Can you say hello there in your own mind? So that's pure thought. Why is it pure thought? Because you created it, you casted that thought, okay? Now, here's the thing. When you meditate, when you meditate, your ego will be coming up with all kinds of things. I'll stand over here. Your ego will be drifting off into the past or the future, okay? Your ego will be doing that, right? Your shadow might even be bringing up very scary thoughts, okay? Because maybe you're not used to looking within. Maybe you're in avoidance. You're avoiding yourself. When you con continually come back to the breath, come back to the breath, come back to the breath, and you do this for enough time, it becomes very clear, oh, I'm not that ego. That's just something that's happening. It's just drifting. It's just getting lost in thought and it's going off in whatever direction it wants to go in, okay? Same thing with pure thought, that's still not even you. That is a ripple on the pond that you have cast, okay? The shadow, same thing, these deep fears, these deep insecurities, they're not you, they are aspects of the psyche. And so, the more you practice meditation and you work on your mental health through mindfulness, you practice being aware of your thoughts. You sit there, I recommend 15 minutes. 15 minutes, yeah? At least, if you're really struggling. 
because you need enough time to experience this, that center, which is you, which is your awareness, which is your consciousness, okay? And so after 15 minutes or so, it become very clear that that drift in mind, that demon, that gremlin is not you, but you are in fact the witness of it. And then once you've had the experience of that, now it becomes real. The thing is, is that you've got to do this daily. You have to keep reminding yourself because you'll get lost again and again and again in the thought loops. So non-negotiable going forward, if you really want to break free from obsessive and intrusive thoughts is daily meditation, okay? So let me give you one more step, one more tip that you can use to help yourself. I know this is a bit of a long video, wow. But once again, if you're getting value, like and subscribe. <laughs> I just gotta throw it in there. I'm insecure, if I'm honest. I'm insecure about this YouTube channel that I'm not gonna get. I've been making videos for years, okay? And I wanna have some success on here. So that's just me being honest and sincere with you. So let's get into the next step. Let's do it. So the next tip that I want to offer you is lifestyle related, and it is to reduce stimulation, reduce stimulation, reduce it, screen time, take it down, refined sugar, take it down, coffee, take it down, caffeine, take it down, vaping, take it down. Weed, take it down. Alcohol, take it down. Reduce or eliminate what you can. Now that might be a journey in itself, right? That is a different journey. And so you do what you can immediately. Don't expect perfection from yourself immediately. Just one day at a time. Set a goal. What's going to be the one thing out of those things that I mentioned there or anything else that you're using for a lot of stimulation? Screens, games, porn. Take one thing and focus on reducing that drastically and then start working on the others, okay? And this is more of the kind of a specialty that I'm focused on now, which is behavioral coaching, okay? To break addictions and self-destructive behavior patterns because that's a story in its own. But nonetheless, overstimulation can aggravate an obsessive mind. What you want to do is you want to be taking energy away from that overthinking, obsessive, intrusive thought space, thought entity. And so you do that by reducing how much you're stimulating your mind. If you're overstimulated, then you're going to be far more in your head than in your body. This kind of loops back to the first point, which was to get into your body, spend more time in your body. So that's the point that I wanted to share with you here, and that is to reduce stimulation okay i said refined sugar not all sugar not fruit refined sugar mm. reduce that let me just recap on everything we've said today yeah the first thing i shared with you the first thing was that obsessive thinking is a futile attempt to solve a problem but problems created with the mind can't be solved with the mind and so you've got to get into your body and out of your head. And the more time you spend in the body, the more time you start to undo that habit, which leads to the next point, which is that obsessive overthinking and intrusive thinking is a habit. It's a habit, which means it was created through repetition. Okay. Or it triggers something in your shadow that you haven't looked at. A fear, an insecurity, something that's deep within your psyche. And you need to look at that. Okay because it's being touched every time you have that thought and because it's so threatening to you, you feed the thoughts with negative energy and scared energy and they repeat even more. And the more and more they repeat, the more and more strong this starts to feel and the more it starts to dominate your life. Now, if you wanna break the habit, you starve and you replace. Starve the gremlin, replace with good thought. The next thing you wanna consider is to stop charging the thoughts altogether, okay? So acknowledge that no thought is good or bad until you decide that it is. Thoughts are just passing, transient, okay? So practice meditation, 
That way you can have the clear experience that you are not your mind. You are not your mind, homie. You are something beyond the mind. You are the observer of your thoughts. Next, we want to reduce stimulation, just like I mentioned here. And we also want to channel our obsession, channel it into something. Get obsessed with personal growth. Get obsessed with reading and learning and find a way to channel that energy because that energy exists inside of you, okay? And just like a habit, habits can only be replaced. They can't just be deleted. The same thing with obsession. Replace obsession. Replace it with a constructive one. Replace it with one that puts you in higher states as opposed to lower states. Fear, guilt, shame, depression. Okay? Maybe I'll talk more on replacing an obsession in another video. But that's something that you can consider. Is to replace the obsession with a different one. So ask yourself the question. Ask yourself the question. What... Can I get obsessed about Conor McGregor? I know he hasn't got the best reputation today. UFC fighter. He said he's obsessed with fighting. He's obsessed with fighting and that's why he was champion for some time. Okay? So, business owners say the same thing. Grant Cardone, this guy who you've probably seen on the YouTube ads, who's a $100 million plus man he said that the only way to get there is through being obsessed okay so what are you going to do what are you going to get obsessed about how are you going to channel this energy channel it in the right direction starve the gremlin if you like the video make sure you like it just get off full screen or scroll down and tap that thumb tap it okay stroke it make sure you tap it subscribe hit that too notification bell hit that too and you'll be notified when I put out more videos check out this video and explore the other content on my channel because I'm sure that you'll find something that you enjoy and always you are welcome to share your views and opinions in the comments below so if this helped please let me know because to be honest it makes me feel good yeah I feel good when I read those positive comments much love to you, be well, have a beautiful day, and I wish you freedom, strength, love, and consistency on the path. Much love, peace.